Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Tobias. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today what I have for you guys is a microphone review. And today the microphone that I'm reviewing is the Movo VSM5. It's an XLR condenser microphone. And today what I'm going to do is a quick unboxing followed by a demonstration, followed by a comparison, followed by my final review and final thoughts. And the two microphones that I'm choosing to compare to the Movo today are the Blue Yeti. A lot of you guys probably know this microphone. It's probably the most popular USB condenser microphone on the market. And it's only slightly more expensive than the Movo microphone. The Blue Yeti goes for around $130, while the Movo microphone goes for $99.95. And the second microphone that I want to compare to the Movo is the Audio-Technica AT4040. It's quite a bit more expensive expensive than the Movo microphone, so I just want to see how they compare to each other. The AT4040 goes for about $300, and it's also a XLR microphone. And just really quick before we start the unboxing, I just want to show you guys the Amazon page for the Movo VSM5. I have it up here on my computer screen, let me show you that. All right guys, so this is the Amazon page for the Movo VSM5. If you look over here, it goes for $99.95, comes with free shipping. And it looks like it's an actual microphone bundle. It includes the microphone itself, an XLR cable, a shock mount, and a pop filter. And I'll have the link to this Amazon page down in the description of this video in case any of you guys wanna check it out. Now let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Alright guys, now here's everything that came inside the box. Right here we have the user manual. Over there we have a little contact card. Down here we have some extra rubber bands for the shock mount in case they break or something. Over here we have the XLR cable and of course the shock mount with the microphone and the pop filter. I think it's really cool how the pop filter attaches to the shock mount. I think that's pretty cool. So if we take a look at the microphone right now, there are two switches on the sides of the microphone. One of them is a low cut filter. Now a low cut filter is often called a high pass filter. And pretty much all it does is it cuts out the lower frequencies when you're recording. So if you have the switch up like this, it's just recording like normal. If you push it down like that, it's going to cut out the lower frequencies. The Audio-Technica AT4040 also has this. If you look over here, here's the AT4040, and that switch right there is also a low-cut filter. I use it all the time when I'm recording vocals. And then if we turn the microphone around, there's a negative 10 decibel pad switch. And I've never seen that before, and I didn't know what this was until I opened up this microphone, but I read the instructions really quick. And what that means is that if you're capturing audio with a lot of like transient peaks, you might want to turn this on because it'll provide more headroom and you'll be less likely to capture distortion. And I just gotta say guys, I love the way this was packaged. This is all foam right here to prevent damage to the microphone during shipping. And of course we still have to test it out so I don't wanna speak too soon, but so far it looks like we're getting a pretty good value for the price. And just real quick guys, I almost forgot, if you guys like this video or if this video helps you out at all, I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like, that would help me out so much. And if you wanna see more videos by me in the future, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button, and let's go ahead and try this out. So as for a mic stand, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this toner microphone arm stand. I'll have this link down in the description below as well in case you wanna check this thing out. All right guys, so I have my microphone set up on the microphone arm stand, and let me just show you guys the interface that I have this running through. All right guys, so I have the microphone plugged into my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, and this microphone is going to require phantom power, so I'm gonna turn that on right there. And yes, you will need some kind of audio interface to use this microphone with. I just got this Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 a couple weeks ago. Before that, I was using this one over here, the PreSonus Fire Studio. But like I said, you will need an audio interface with phantom power to use this microphone. In case you're interested in this one right here, I'll go ahead and have a link for it as well in the description below. Everything that I'm showing in this video, I'll just have a link to it in the description of this video. And then I'm going to be recording my audio into Logic Pro X. All right guys, so in the count of three, the audio that you are hearing is going to switch from the microphone on my camera to this microphone right here. One, two, three. 
All right guys, so now the audio that you guys are hearing is coming from the Movo microphone right here. I'm also listening to the audio through my headphones so I can hear how it sounds. And so far it sounds pretty good. I think I am hearing a little background noise from my um, air conditioner. I'm pretty sure that's what that is, so. But I mean, so far it sounds really good. Um, Just to let you guys know, I have the negative 10 decibel pad turned to zero, so it's not on right now. And then I also have the low cut filter, I have that turned off as well. So now we're just hearing the, you know, the regular straight audio from this microphone. I can hear someone using, it's funny, I could hear someone using a uh, lawnmower somewhere in the distance. But uh, just real quick to test those two things out, I'll go ahead and turn on the negative 10 decibel pad. One, two, three, here we go. All right, guys, so it just got much quieter. Big difference. So now I could talk really loudly. I could talk really loudly and it's not gonna peak. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. All right, now we're back to the normal, normal uh, recording volume, I guess. And I'll go ahead and turn the low cut on. All right, so now it's on. Do you guys hear a difference? I think I might hear a very, very slight difference. It's really hard to tell in my voice because I don't have like a really deep voice or anything. Now let's go ahead and compare this to how the Blue Yeti sounds. So on the count of three, we're gonna switch from this microphone over to the Blue Yeti. So one, two, three. All right guys, so now the audio that you guys are hearing is coming from the Blue Yeti. I have the microphone set to the cardioid pattern on the back of the microphone. If you guys know the Blue Yeti, there's like several different recording patterns. Another thing about the Blue Yeti is that it is a, a small diaphragm microphone. The Movo microphone is a large diaphragm microphone and so is the Audio-Technica AT4040. And apparently larger diaphragm microphones from what I understand they have a, a much lower um, noise floor and as you can see with the Blue Yeti right here it seems to have a much higher noise floor we're hearing that like background hiss um, way more than we were with the Movo microphone I'm just noticing that right now so so far I do think the Movo mic sounds better than the Blue Yeti now on the count of three let's go ahead and switch over to the Audio-Technica AT4040 one, two, three. All right, guys, so now the audio that you're hearing is coming from the Audio-Technica AT4040. I have the low cut filter turned off, and I just realized that this microphone also has the negative 10 decibel uh, pad switch. I never realized, or maybe I saw it before and I just didn't know what it was, but I've never used it. I totally forgot that this microphone had it, but I also have that switch turned off. One more thing I didn't mention earlier, I'm not doing any audio processing to any of these tracks. The only thing I'm doing is increasing the gain to a comfortable level, and also I might just raise the volumes so that they're all like an equal volume, so like, when I'm editing the video, you know, all the volumes aren't different, but I'm not doing any EQ, I'm not doing any compression, anything like that. So let me know what you guys think about the audio from these three microphones. Let me know in the comments below what you think. In my opinion, the Audio-Technica sounds the best. This microphone definitely sounds the best. I would say coming in second place would be the Movo mic, and then coming in third place would be the Blue Yeti. But of course, the AT4040 is three times the price of the Movo mic, so you gotta take that into consideration as well. But for a, a $100 microphone, I definitely think the Movo mic is definitely worth the price. You will be paying a little extra than the Blue Yeti just because you're going to have to buy an audio interface to use the Movo mic with, unless you already have one. So you will be paying more in that respect. But I always talk about this and I always think like, you know, XLR microphones are like better investments for the future, in my opinion. But um, anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I think we've heard enough. Let's go ahead and do one more comparison just really quick. I'll cut to each microphone really quick. Check, check, how does this sound? One, two, three, one, two, three. Check, check, how does this sound? One, two, three, one, two, three. Check, check, how does this sound? One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, guys, so when it comes to the Movo microphone, I definitely think that it's worth the price. I think this is a great buy for like a budget condenser microphone. I think it's a really good price. I like how it came with the shock mount, the pop filter, but I'm really curious to know what you guys think about it. Let me know down in the comments of 
this video. And one more thing, guys, um, this company, Movo, I'm on their website right now, and it looks like they're actually based here in Los Angeles, which I think is really cool. And once again, all the equipment that you saw me use in this video, including the Movo microphone, I'll have a link to down in the description of this video in case you wanna check anything out. And if you like this video or if this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like, that would help me out tremendously. And if you'd like to see more videos by me in the future, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notifications button, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Peace. Thank you.